we had decided long ago that we were not going to have our own children. So because we don't have any offspring, human offspring, we have plenty of animals that are our foster kids that are still <laughs> running around, but uh, human children, we wanted to protect this forest and keep it forest in perpetuity. And the only way to do that, we decided, was to form a nonprofit trust. And that is how Sci Sanctuary Trust came about and evolved. This is another favorite area where the elephants come up and down from the river. My very first camera trap photos of the elephants were at night coming up and down from that river. And they had a little baby with them. <laughs> it was very sweet. There are at least 30 species of trees that are fully dependent on elephants for propagation. Because their seeds are so big, only elephants can swallow them down and pass them whole. Other animals may eat the outer coating, but they can't swallow the seed whole. Only the elephants can. So without the elephants, you don't have these trees. If we can piece back together the migration corridor of elephants, the elephant corridors, when you do that of a great landscape animal like this, then you're protecting forests for virtually all the other animals too. And by doing this also, you cut down dramatically on human-animal conflict. We're seeing not only more of the same species we had in the past, but even additional species, uh, some of which are quite endangered, like the Nilgadi Martin. Of course, we have the Asian elephant. Uh, and over the past six years, the Asian elephants, they have come and given birth here in the sanctuary four times. Two boys, two girls. Uh, other animals are the endangered dole. They first came a few years ago, a mom, dad, and seven pups. Grass eaters like um, Somber and Chito. We've also seen, for example, leopard cat. Uh, and so they come here because they are safe and they know they've got plenty of water. They can bring their young infants here, their young calves here without fear of any kind of um, problems from humans. And this is a very positive thing. These trees are approximately 700 years old. And one of these trees is a micro ecosystem for at least 50 other species of plants and animals. They are water loving trees and they're truly, truly magnificent. Rainforest areas, which uh, most of India falls into that uh, area, the forests themselves produce over 50% of the rainfall. So when air comes in from the ocean and then passes over our rainforests here in the Western Cots, it actually affects monsoon rains down in the plains thousands of kilometers away, helping to produce the rainfall there. So the forests here are critical for rainfall both above ground water sources and below ground aquifer sources of fresh water there. But what is happening here in Kodagu, when we first came here from 86% forest cover in the late 1970s to no more than 16% forest cover today for the entire district of Kodagu. And this is having disastrous effects on rainfall patterns, not just in our district, but throughout the South. And the water supplies, not just in our district, but all through Southern Peninsula of India. Your streams and rivers originate from a forest. That's why the Tunga, Bhadra and all have dried up. That's why the Ganges or the Ganga has reduced, has been drastically reduced in size again deforestation. 
I'm sure that anyone in Bangalore or in Tamil Nadu for that matter remembers the court fights between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over the use of the Kaveri River. That's because we're not getting the rainfalls in either location that we should have because forests have been cut down. So if we take this seriously, which we must, and protect our forests, we are ensuring the future of our rain, uh, of our water sources, both above ground and below ground. And again, this is where businesses can help a lot, the youth can help a lot, because it is your future that we're, we're, we're talking about. And by piecing this back together, we save our water sources, we ensure that the animals can keep the forest healthy and the forest can give home to the animals. We protect ourselves from climate change and we set the groundwork for a healthier, more vibrant, uh, richer in culture in the spiritual values that make India, India. This sanctuary is supposed to be a model of hope for all private individuals, companies, groups. Look, there is hope to save India still. Because if global warming continues due to massive deforestation and drying up of our rivers and streams, you will not have fresh water. It's been the most fulfilling experience of our lives it's been our life's work, and we'd love to pass on to others what we've learned and help inspire them. Because truly, our, our future as a beautiful living planet is dependent on it. It's a dream place for us. It's just we've been very, very fortunate and blessed that the dream has become reality as well. And by being in nature, we found that peace and solitude within. And that set the path of our lives.